completed an automatic transmission service on this car and I can't believe the difference it's made. It's so smooth and the gear changing is so direct and quiet and positive. Um, 50,000 or nearly 50,000 kilometres <coughs> and I'd say it was uh, definitely due for it. The Mercedes nonsense of a few years ago of build for life uh, just doesn't make sense. Um, but the oil that came out of this was quite uh, dirty and smelled horrible. Uh, the filter is um, you know, quite contaminated. So it's well worth doing. Um, I'm just so pleased with how it drives now. And I did it all through improvisation, no uh, Mercedes special tools. Um, I drained everything properly, I flushed the oil cooler. Uh, I think I did a very thorough job. The dealers here in Australia want $800 to $1,000 to uh, do that auto transmission service. I don't think they've flushed the oil cooler. Um, and I'd much rather keep that $1,000 for myself. Uh, this cost me only a little over $100. Most of that was for the automatic transmission fluid with the correct MD specification. It's not a difficult job and I'm going to show you how I did it. I'm doing an acceleration test, 0 to 60 miles per hour, so you can hear it running through the gears. I pulled 6.3 seconds, which is pretty good for the 3 litre V6 turbo diesel, but I do have a tuning box. Okay, I've re removed all the 8mm uh, screws that hold the plastic panel on, and you can see it's hanging down there. That was pretty easy, um, you just have to pull it backwards towards the rear of the car and uh, then it just it drop, drops off onto the ground so that was quite easy and there's the transmission oil pan there. Okay the first thing I've done here is I've removed the engine bash plate and the big plastic cover that lies under the transmission. Now I'm going to get the back of the car up, probably put it on axis stands and get the transmission pan uh, about level. Okay I've, I've got the car up on ramps at the front and I've just jacked the rear up and put it on axle stands and I've got it so the oil pan is pretty well level as you can see I've got the spirit level on there and it's it's pretty close to level so uh, that's pretty good um, now there's only three things I'm going to undo to let the oil out the first thing well, one of them is the oil pan drain plug just here with the five millimeter hex bit and the other thing I'm going to drain is I'm going to take off the oil cooler line by undoing that bolt there and that's the oil cooler feed line so that will just pull out so I'll let oil drain out of that and then the other thing is the torque converter which has a plastic uh, sorry a rubber Cap on it, and that's it just here. So I'll take that off, and I'm going to have to turn the engine around with a 27 millimeter um, socket on the end of the crank to get the torque converter drain plug showing through that window. So there's only three things to undo to let the oil out. So We'll get stuck into that. So now. there it is. I just turned the engine over with a 27 millimeter socket, turned it clockwise, looking from the front, and I've got the torque converter drain plug in the middle of the window there. So I've taken the torque converter drain plug out, and you can see it's uh, draining out now into this. There's the drain plug there. Um, it takes a four millimeter Allen key. Okay, I've, I've cracked the oil pan filler, or sorry, the oil pan drain plug. And it's actually a six millimeter, so they've changed it. So I'll let that run out too. Okay, so that's stopped draining now. But remember, this has an overflow clock. So what I've got to do is get a drift and just tap the pipe upwards so it falls over inside the oil pan, and then the rest of the oil will come out of there. Okay, I've taken the eight millimeter bolt out there holding in the oil cooler feed line so now I should be able to pull that pipe out. There you go so that's yeah so it's a little bit 
drained out of there. What I'm going to do afterwards is I'm going to uh, uh, flush the oil cooler by uh, putting a fitting on the end of that and uh, flushing some new oil through. There's the oil cooler feed line that we looked at earlier. Um, to do the flushing operation, uh, you'll also need to, I'll just follow that along here, but you'll also need to remove a, a bracket, a screw, just there, which is on the left hand side of the engine sump, you just need to undo that to release that oil cooler feed line pipe so that you can pull it out give yourself enough room to put the fitting on the end to flush it. I just used that uh, punch there and the nylon hammer um, and just put it inside the oil drain hole on the pan and you can feel the uh, overflow pipe, you can feel the end of it, so you just give it a slight tap and it comes off, falls over inside the pan and then the rest of the oil runs out and that's what's happening at the moment. So I'm just waiting for that to drain and then I'm going to take the oil pan off. Here's the oil pan and you can see the oil pan bolts um, they, these are actually temporary bolts that I've put in, um, so I'm showing you this after I've done the job. But to get the oil pan out, you need to undo this bracket here um, because those electrical connectors get in the way and they stop the oil pan from moving forward. So this um, tubular bracket that holds that connector a lot easier if you <clears throat> undo the two bolts, there's one on each side, there's, there's one here that's on the, the left hand side of the car and there's one over on the other side, so it's just a uh, 10 millimeter or a 12 millimeter socket, we'll get that off and then uh, just pull that, pull that bracket back and it'll give you plenty of room. Um, and to take the oil pan off you just remove those six bolts and drop it uh, forward, or we'll drop it down at the front, and then pull it forward. Yeah, the dealers want a fortune to do this service um, here in Australia. They're up around eight hundred to a thousand dollars, and I don't know if they do it as well as uh, I do it. I don't think they. Yeah, you can see the uh, tubular bracket there that has another bracket welded on that holds those electrical connectors here, and they're the things that get in the way. But I quite enjoy doing this work. Uh, I quite enjoy outsmarting the Germans. Um, I'm sort of getting my own back. They invaded Poland, so I'm getting my own back. That's a joke, by the way. I don't want to offend any Germans. Thanks. Okay, that's the oil pan off, and I might as well pull the filter off while I'm here. Ah, plenty of That's it. That's it. What a mess. So here's the oil pan as clean as a whistle. I'd be happy to eat my breakfast off that. And you can see the white pipe, that's the overflow pipe. Now, that was the one I knocked upwards into the oil pan before I took it off the car. And I used this um, drift tool here. So all I did was I, I put it in, I just put it in under there into the hole and you can feel it, you can feel it hit the bottom of the plastic pipe. And if you give it a tap, uh, upwards, it'll just pop up and fall over. You can see the two magnets there on the oil pan there, the Mercedes magnets, and I've cleaned them up, but for good measure I've, I've got a high temperature neodymium magnet here. Um, that is extremely powerful, and I'm going to put that in there as well. Just put an extra magnet in, I can't see how it's going you know, to cause any harm, so this is very powerful. You can hear that when it went on, and it's very hard to and I cannot, I cannot pull that off. Now here's my special tool made from a sports drink bottle. 
I'm going to use this to flush the oil cooler on the other end of the line what I've got is a short piece of metal tube with a piece of rubber tube on the end of that that I've had on the grinder and uh, made into a conical shape so I can poke that into the end of the feed line and then on here you can see the tube there is a tight fit and then I've got a small hole there which I put the air compressor gun onto set at about 5 psi and I'll put about um, half a litre or so of ATF in this bottle and flush it through so I'll, I'll go and do that. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to hold this end here into the end of the oil cooler line like that do that with my right hand by holding it onto the hole here. So you can probably see the oil getting pumped through, the containers going down. And I'm just running it back through the transmission, so it's, it's dripping, it's coming through the transmission now. So that worked very well. The oil coming out is quite clean now. Okay, I've, now that I've finished, I've replaced the oil filter by pushing that back into place. It just snaps into the hole. I've uh, reconnected the tubular bracket at the front, put the oil line uh, back in, and I've reinstalled the oil pan. When I do this, I use, uh, as a temporary measure, M6 by 40 millimeter. Um, high tensile automotive bolts, torque to 12 newton metres. Um, once everything's okay and I'm happy there's no leaks and everything's going okay, I then take each one out and replace them with the proper uh, one use only aluminium bolts, torque to 4 newton metres, and then turned 180 degrees. The fitting I made uh, to pump the fluid in, um, I've got a mini lathe, so I made up this sitting here out of a bit of alloy stock, put a 14 millimeter by one and a half mil thread on the end of it with an O-ring. Um, I've got a valve there and some 3 8 or 10 millimeter plastic tubing. Okay, let me show you what I've done here. Um, so what I've done is I've, I've drilled a hole in the cap of the oil container just smaller than the outside diameter of the plastic tube. So you push that through the hole in the cap and then it, it'll actually seal and then I've drilled a very small hole here which is where I will put the nozzle from the air compressor tri trigger gun um, you set that at about 5 psi maybe a little bit more um, and then you know, on the other end here I'm going to screw that into the oil drain hole in the transmission um, put the compressor trigger on and just push the fluid straight in. So let's have a go at that. And I've got a valve on there, so once I've pushed it in, I can close the valve. I'll open that up. So I'm going to put about seven litres in initially. So let's have a go at that. So I've got it all set up now. Here's the container. Here's my air trigger gun. So I'm going to be putting that on to there like that. Look under the car, there's the tube, and there's my fitting on the oil pan, and the valve's open, so let's have a go. Right, here we go.
Okay, I've pumped a little over seven litres into the transmission. Good thing is there's no leaks. Everything looks fine under there. So I've closed the valve and what I've done is I've taped the temperature probe for the digital multimeter onto the uh, oil pan there with a piece of insulating foam over it and now I'm going to start the car and bring it up to start bringing it up to temperature so I'm still bringing the oil up to temperature I'm aiming for 45 degrees so I haven't got too long to go okay I just stopped the engine a moment ago and pumped another 750 mils in so I've got a total of about uh, just less than 8 litres in the transmission at the moment. It's still warming up, up to 38. Uh, so once it gets to 45, all I'm going to do is disconnect the pipe and open the valve on my little fitting and let the excess run out. OK, we've now got the transmission to 45 degrees and it's essential to have the engine running, uh, transmission in park, the engine will idle and now I'm going to open the valve and hopefully there will be a constant flow and then it will slow down to some drops. So let's have a go. So I'm going to have to add a little bit more fluid because uh, there wasn't a constant flow. Yep, that's pretty good. It's flying constantly. Must leave the engine idling and the transmission in part. So once it's down to a few drops, that's it. Yep, so it's just sort of spurting out now, so... That's the end of it. I'm going to now put the sump plug in. Okay, I've put the uh, drain plug back in and torqued it up to 22 newton metres. I've just cleaned up all the oil. Um, and now I'm going to take it for a test drive. I'm hoping that the car drives like a new one.